So now that the dust has settled and all the news has sunk in a bit, what happens next? Will all those Bethesda games be exclusive, or will some of them stay multi-platform? All that, coming up. What's up guys, Cameron here. Go ahead and slap that like button for me and make sure you are subscribed and turn on that notification bell so you never miss a video. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. So Xbox bought Zenimax Media. I bet that's not the first time you heard that this week. This acquisition was huge for Xbox. $7.5 billion huge. This family of studios are now owned by Microsoft and they include the whole nine yards. Doom, Wolfenstein, Elder Scrolls, Rage, Fallout, Dishonored, and more. So naturally, the question everyone has been asking on YouTube and all over the internets is will these games be exclusive now? Now I've seen countless videos and podcasts talking about this subject, but no one has really nailed down the way I personally feel about the situation. So let's talk about it. If you want to know if these games are going to be exclusive, then you need to look at the history of prior acquisitions. Xbox will play nice with prior agreements like The Outer Worlds being on all platforms, but the sequel they have already said will be an Xbox ecosystem exclusive. I believe the same will happen here, for the most part. I've heard both sides of the argument on this one. Either one, they put all those games on all platforms to make as much money as possible, or two, they don't. They keep everything new and on the way and Xbox exclusive, minus the few games that are already about to release or have exclusive deals with Sony and such. Think about that for a minute. Xbox will be publishing games on the PS5, at least for a short time. Me personally, I lie somewhere in the middle, but before I dive deeper into what I think will happen, let's look at the factors. Xbox may take some heat if they lock down all those games to Xbox. But in my opinion, why should they care when Sony does this already? I mean, Spider-Man is a beloved character around the world, and Sony has locked that thing down as a console exclusive. But knowing Phil Spencer, I'm pretty sure he's going to want to play nice. And also, yes, they could possibly make more money, in theory, by putting all those games on all consoles. Xbox, PS5, Switch, and of course PC and xCloud. But the metrics used when debating this are from last gen. People say, well, PlayStation has 115 million units sold. Yeah, but that was last game, bruh. Just because you scored 50 points in the game prior doesn't mean you will this time around. Six months to a year into this generation, we could be seeing a market dominated by Xbox. They've definitely positioned themselves to do so, which would in turn make the money argument invalid. I mean, think about it. Some of those games like Elder Scrolls and Doom are 100% console sellers. If they lock them down to the Xbox ecosystem, they are without a doubt going to sell more consoles than if they didn't. Which, selling more consoles usually means more Xbox Live Gold or Game Pass subscribers. Remember, Game Pass grew 50% since April, from 10 million subscribers to 15 million. The buckets of cash are flowing in to Xbox headquarters. So what do I think Xbox is going to do with this newfound power? I have to admit, it's been funny to see the shift of the Sony fanboys. They went from Xbox doesn't have games to Oh please Xbox, please don't take our games. Their loyalty to the Sony brand isn't gaining them much this gen already. Once again, just buy both and leave the console war mentality behind. This isn't 2008. Personally though, I don't think Xbox will lock down every one of these games to the Xbox ecosystem. Here's what I think. Games like Wolfenstein, Rage, Dishonored, and maybe even Starfield will go multi-platform to kind of ease the tension a bit. Like I said, Phil likes to play nice, at least at the start. Later on, I think games like Fallout 5, Doom 3, and Elder Scrolls 6 will all be in the Xbox ecosystem only. Notice I keep saying Xbox ecosystem, meaning Xbox, PC, and xCloud. So either way, no worries PlayStation fans, you guys can still play those games on all those PCs you claim to have. If you don't have a PC, you could pay $15 one month, download Game Pass on your phone, and play them all on the xCloud. Or the best option in my opinion, just suck it up, buy an Xbox Series console so you never miss out on anything. That's what I do. And to the people saying I can't afford both, do what I used to do. Buy your favorite console on launch day, then buy the other next year. Nobody said you have to buy both day one. 
With cheaper models being offered by both Sony and Microsoft, it just makes it even easier. The fact is, Xbox spent a lot of money on this deal. They aren't going to drop that kind of cash for a company and then give it all away to their competition. Once again, I still think Xbox will publish some games on the PS5, just not the heavy hitters. Don't be surprised if Elder Scrolls 6 comes out with an only on Xbox decal. So yeah, that's what I think. And to those of you who think Xbox just spent $7.5 billion to not gain any exclusives, you're dreaming. But you should still be very happy Xbox bought ZeniMax and Amazon or Google didn't. Because if they had bought these same studios with all that IP, they most certainly would have locked them down to Stadia or Amazon's new streaming service, Luna. Forcing us all to play those games over stream instead of a local hardware. Now with that said, I think I still need to make a comment on the quality of Bethesda's games. Strictly Bethesda Studios, really. Because I mean, Doom is extremely well crafted, and so are the others, but games like Fallout 76 were an absolute disaster. I understand they have lots of talent at these studios. I mean, they have created Fallout 3, Skyrim and such, there's no denying that. But I fear their complacency. They have grown attached to that old game engine, and they need to cut it loose. I really hope Matt Booty from Xbox or someone else will step in and make them change it up. I mean, if you have the id tech engine, and it's magnificent, why not put all those studios using it? Or if they can't do that, make them use the Unreal Engine 5 for the next Elder Scrolls game. I heard Todd Howard talking about they were overhauling the engine again, and honestly, I rolled my eyes. This is the same guy who told us the whole 16 times the detail in Fallout 76. 16 times the detail. 16 times the detail. 16 times the detail. Now once again, I know the dude is talented and can make good games, but it's time to cut that engine loose. It's spanned across three or four generations at this point, and the attachment they have to it has gotten unhealthy for the brand and for the games. Also, please don't port Skyrim to Series X. Let backwards compatibility be enough. Use that time for Elder Scrolls 6 or Starfield. Get the next game out and stop milking that old dead cow that is Skyrim. Sorry for the hot take Skyrim fans. But that's about it for this video. So what do you guys think? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? Only time will tell. If you haven't already, please hit that like button, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so you never miss a video. That YouTube algorithm is a mess, and I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Also, follow me on Twitter at GodsGeeksYT. That's GodsGeeksYT. And before I go, I gotta let you know. I love you, I appreciate you, and I hope you have a great week. I'll see you in the next video, my friends. Later. the detail.